Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Utopia in our Federation series. This is the planet that is going to probably start the war with the Fiosliban Hive. We've been talking for the past couple of episodes about, you know, how do I provoke these guys into declaring war? And that the answer to that question is let's create a bunch of um, border friction. And we need to do that by, you know, settling these worlds out here. Now, I've been talking to you guys a lot in the comments about a couple of things. First of all, looking into the Federation fleet and how the heck that works, and that's new uh, to me. But also, I haven't really done migration treaties a lot. And last episode, I had the opportunity to colonize these worlds here, for instance, uh, Zarmaton and Seraklis. And I was hesitant because I wasn't sure what was going on with the fact that those other species would be able to colonize those planets. I'm like, wait, because am I having, I thought maybe I was having those options because the Federation member races could colonize for each other somehow. But my, my thinking was just backwards. I didn't have the option to colonize with those other species because of the Federation membership. I had the option because of the migration treaties and because of the fact that we now have two Uko Praknar citizens in the Republic, not in the Federation, in the Republic. And then we have nine Athenibian citizens in the Republic, which I can use to colonize these worlds for the Republic, which is kind of awesome. So these populations have just migrated openly. There might be humans in the other places as well, because we have migration trees. So that's why we have that. And I definitely want to, first of all, before we do any colonization, let's take a look at these specific, as the at, at these races, at these species that are now a part of our Republic, because they can bring stuff to the table. First of all, just a quick reminder, the humans are wasteful, nomadic, and adaptive. This is a standard setup for the, uh, this is the vanilla setup for the current version of Stellaris human beings. Uh, we are eventually going to modify the wasteful trait out when we have that opportunity. Uh, the Ukopraknar are also wasteful, but they have extremely adaptive. They are resilient, they're solitary, and they're weak. So resilient is kind of offset by weak a little bit, um, which is frustrating, but they are, uh, they have a desert preference, so they can found different types of planets. And then the Athenebians, or they can settle different types of planets. Then the Athenebians have an ocean preference, which is nice. So that's kind of similar to our category. The Sinor and the humans both have continental preference. So it's in the same um, biome type, but it is a different preference uh, type of world. So they could potentially do better on ocean worlds than humans could. And they are, of course, quick learners and talented. So it's nice to have nine Athenebians already in our territory. And they uh, also, for their, for their rights, they're very similar to humans, with the exception of when you look at humans, we have full military service. You can have leaders and soldiers, whereas these other races can only be soldiers. And they all have colonization rights um, and then migration controls. Why? Hang on, let's take a look at this real quick. Okay, so basically once these guys have migrated in, they have to stay on the worlds they migrate into. So I could, I think there is actually a faction, let's take a quick look at this, that wants that to not be the case. Is this the full enfranchisement group, I'm guessing? Free movement. Yeah, allowing all species access to the core worlds, prohibiting forced re resettlement and disabling migration controls will please the full enfranchisement group. So I could get some additional influence this way, which would be handy because this is a growing faction. And, um, yeah, let, you know what? Let's let's go full good guy. Let's do that. Let's let's go ahead and give these guys the ability to move around. We're going to turn off migration controls for these guys. So we want to go ahead and let them move around as they so wish. They are members of the Republic and they deserve the right to move around. So they're full citizens and they can move around as they want. Now that we've done that, um, there we go. Okay, now this faction will be happier. We're getting a little bit of influence from them. As you can see, we're getting plus three as opposed to plus, as opposed to plus two. As usual, Hadrian is speaking too fast for his own good. So let's, uh, now that we know how that works, next order of business before I check out the Federation fleet is I want to go ahead and colonize this world. Now we need a little bit more in the way of minerals. So let's speed things up for just a second here. Not too long. And stop. All right, let's go ahead and colonize with the Ukopraknar, and we're going to put you down right there. It looks like there's a Xenozoo option here. That's good news. So this is going to be Siroclus Prime. We're going to colonize that there. And then Zarmaton uh, can colonize as well using the Ukopraknar, I believe. Uh, we could also, it looks like we could colonize using the, oh, there's already, that's right. There's already a colony headed for Zarmaton. Um, and I think it's a human colony. So we're going to go with that. But I'm hoping I'll find additional worlds in the area which I can use to, like I said, make um, new sectors and such. 
Research complete. We have lots of new colonizing to do as well. I mean, there's still worlds in Beta Sector that haven't been colonized yet. And where is Gamma Sector again? Is it... I can't remember where I put Gamma. Gamma Sector's out here. That's right. So this also needs to be colonized with Uko Pragnar. So yeah, we, we need to send a few colony ships now, out now that we have that ability. We have finished our research on defense stations. We'll take a look at Federation... Um, at Federation stuff in just a second at the Federation fleet. We are two months away from Satramine Glass. I'm from Satramine Gas. I'm hoping that when we get that, when, when we finish that research, we will have some already in our territory because that would be amazing. We would get better governing ethics attraction. And of course, we are 42 months away from another core sector system. I will never ever complain about that. Now, the ability to have battleships could be useful. Then again, the ability to have plasteel armor could also be useful. Let's go ahead and go for the armor first, because that's an improvement to our existing fleet and our their ability to survive attacks. All right, we also, speaking of upgrades, we need to go ahead and do that. Looks like that didn't affect too much. And yeah, we have so much going on out here. This is fantastic. There's an ocean world out here that we probably need to go ahead and colonize. Let's go ahead and have the... I think if we have the... Yeah, the Athenebians colonize it. That would be best. And we're going to plop these guys down right here. This is Misarthum Prime. So we can do a few more. All right, so the Finu Deathbringers have ended their rivalry with us, with, which is interesting. All right, this Savannah world also needs to be colonized. This is Rovonic 2. Let's go ahead and... All right, we need a bit more in the way of resources. So we're going to speed through another month here. We're going to start off... Oh, we have a... We have an extra core world right now. I might just... Mm, I might need to make a new sector. That's what I'll do. All right, let's stop for a second. And that's Robonic Secundus. And then we'll have additional stuff once we finish clearing out these space amoebas out here. And we have the Enematic Fortress in Hyan, so that's going to be a little tougher to get to those planets. But at least we have that system right there to colonize, which would effectively bring the same, you know, kind of system into our territory. So it looks like... I don't need a new... Oh, yes, I do. It's this colony that just finished, Chiban. And then we have a colony ship that has just finished. Now, it said there's already a planned colony. Zarmaton is being colonized. All right, so we have another colony ship that is not doing anything. Let's see, this is a human colony ship. Best thing to do would probably be to settle, like, here. Could Osmodean 2 be colonized by humans? Yes, it could. So let's go ahead and colonize this world here. Put you down right there, Osmodean Prime. And then we still need to fix our settlement problem. Um, so once Soraklis has been settled, these borders should, question mark, join up. <laughs> we'll see. Chibon Prime, I think, has been fully settled by humans, which is good. And let's also take a quick look at our sectors and make sure they both have governors. I think they do. They do indeed. Yes, Gamma Sector has a governor as well. So yeah, this is causing issues at the moment, but as soon as we've got some, some more stuff colonized out here, we should be able to resolve those issues. I do need to go ahead and start a new sector. Or do I? Wait. Yeah, it's Gamma. So this sector will be... Delta sector. Let's go ahead and create new. All right. That's not the Chiwan Prime sector. This is the Delta sector. And what leaders do we have to assign to it? Another good one, maybe? No, of course not. <laughs> Why would you expect that? Uh, but I do have Ai Kuang, who is nice and young. So she will be able to lead that sector for a good while. And let's also, while I'm thinking about it, let's check sector settings. We have space construction, colonization, respecting tower resources, and redevelopment. Okay, so it looks like these sector settings are pretty common. They, they become automatic based on how you set them maybe for your first sector, which is nice. I like that. Um, eventually, I will need to send some resources to these sectors after we've done a little bit more to build up our fleet. Construction complete. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a moment just to Research expand into this new territory we've got here. Research complete, what do we have? Okay, now we did not, unfortunately, get any Satramine gas. I was really excited about that. Oh, we're starting to get some uh, endgame text. Wasn't expecting that. Let's go ahead and go for uh, the zero-point reactor. Well, no, let's go for physics lab two first because that'll help with research speed. 
Atmospheric readings from Mesarthem 4A do not match simulated do not match simulated projections. System survey complete. Well then why don't you have a look at that for me, please, and thank you. System survey complete. All right, Fino Deathbringers has declared the Galactic Selmi Union their rival. Interesting. Yeah, so we have a Stellarite Devourer there, which we can eventually take care of, but All right, colonization is in progress where? Out here? Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across Mesarthem 4A's face. They are cast not by clouds, but sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science officer Yegor Maximushkin, 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 there you go. Yegor, Max, Max, uh, Yegor Maximushkin, there we go, is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. Okay. <laughs> Love that response. Okay. That is all I needed to know. All right, we actually have a good amount of resources coming in now. Speaking of sending resources to other sectors, you know, we have that option, or we will have it pretty soon. We've got a colony ship on the way. We've got two colony ships out. So definitely got a lot more going on here. We can go ahead and colonize uh, Ejok 2 as well. Now, these sectors should be doing this themselves. I'm a little surprised that they're not. Because these planets have been sitting in that sector for a while. I've kind of been waiting. <laughs> Just saying. I've kind of been waiting for them to take care of that. All right. So this new colony ship is arriving. And it looks like a new colony is starting here. Ooh, nice. We have another colonizable planet right here. I think one thing I might need to do after this guy's done. We're going to come to Chibon. And I want to build a wormhole station out here. All right. So we're moving on speed three for the moment. Now this border friction is going to piss the hive mind off. It's going to. And how are we doing on cruisers? We're at 15. I think I was going to go up to... I think I was going to do six Assur class cruisers. Okay, so that's that one. And then... Two... Wait, you know what? We can do these on Sirius Prime as well. Two... Three. Okay, and that's all we can do for now. But now we've got some more cruisers coming. Let's not forget that very important element. I'm glad we still have as much influence income as we do right now. I wasn't expecting it to be that good for that long. All right, so we probably need to go ahead and colonize that Tundra world. Seeing as we have all this influence, they have a mineral bonus as well, which is nice. Ooh. These guys look a lot like the... Uh... This species looks very similar to the one that's already... We're going to have to uplift them, too. That's fine. Let's go ahead and colonize with the... Well, you know what we could do? We could colonize with the Sinur. Let's take a quick look and see if we can actually examine these. So these are Rakudon, and they have a Tundra preference. So they're different from the Sinur. I like it. Um, so if they have a Tundra preference... Yeah, I think I'm just going to colonize with humans. We'll do similarly to what we did before. I don't want to do this from Earth because it's currently building another type of ship. So let's go ahead and land on Ferrothon Prime. Need to get that colonized ASAP. And then we'll have a nice little sector out here, I think. Once I'm really hoping that once Soraklis builds up, we're going to be able to... Nice! Additional research stations have been constructed. That was handy. All right, the Fenu Deathbringers have just insulted us, even though they declared their rivalry over. Okay. You make a lot of sense, guys. Okay, class 12 asteroid orbits this planet. The small planetoid's orbit appears to be too stable for its presence to be a natural occurrence. All right, so Zarmaton Prime was just established and we are over our core sector limit again. So what I need to do... See, I want this to be part of Delta Sector. So I need this territory to join. And right now, we our borders are not... Ah, here we go. Whoa! What? Hello? So apparently they don't like, the Fallen Empire doesn't like that we colonize close to them, even though we'd already colonized another system close to them. Well, that's not good. Let's see, Spire and Shard, they're overwhelming. They have a capacity superior. Um, maybe we just need to surrender to them? Hang on, let's, let's see if we can just go ahead and Yeah, see, let's see. 
this will reduce our influence gain if this happens. Because I don't want to fight these guys. Like, they, we will get destroyed. Like, we need to just give up this colony. We didn't realize it would piss them off. That, that kind of sucks because I wanted that planet, but... Yeah, I, I can't accept the humiliation but keep the planet either. Ugh, crap, yeah, this is the Fallen Empire, if I wasn't clear about that. This is not a war we can win. That's why I'm already thinking about surrendering. There's no point even trying. We would just lose all of our ships, lose all of our ships and then the hive mind would obliterate us. We will also gain 100 influence. So this will reduce our influence gain. All right, well, you know what? If that's the way it's going to be, then let's go ahead and let's surrender. The worst possible outcome. Oh. As if to punish us for not only warring with the stagnant ascendancy of the Spiron Shard, but then accepting defeat, Spiron agents appeared by Chancellor Asha Mabanjwa's side after the peace negotiation concluded. They dispatched our Chancellor with unseen weaponry and practiced brutality before melting away as if they were never there. Holy crap. With unseen weaponry and practiced brutality before melting away as if they were never there. Wow. Well, all right. Um, so that's been taken care of. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, Asha. I uh, didn't know that was going to happen. All right, let's see if we have someone that can give us a unity bonus. Because I think we were enjoying that from Asha. Building cost minus 10%, food plus 10. There, there was really no point in fighting that war. For those of you thinking, why didn't you fight? There was no point. We're nowhere near able to take on a fallen empire yet. I'm just glad they haven't gotten mad at us for other worlds. So that did reduce our influence gain, unfortunately. Energy credit boost and a terraforming cost reduction. That's kind of tempting. Neil Landau, he's leading engineering research right now. How old is he? He's 41. You know, let's go ahead and support Neil Landau. Give, give us some additional energy credits, because our energy income is not the best. And we'll support it one more time, just for just for shiggles. All right, so there's that. So we've got to leave that world alone, unfortunately. Um, really sucks that that happened, but it is what it is. So that's probably going to happen with the hive mind pretty soon, too, I imagine. All right, construction ships are still working away. This colony ship is on the way to Ferrothon. I really hope that establishing those colonies... All right, Neil Landau has been elected, and now we need to go ahead and implement someone, hopefully with materials expertise, into this category. All right, we've got a New Worlds expertise and a Voidcraft expertise. What are we researching? Statecraft and computing. Hmm. Well, here's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and recruit the New Worlds expertise. Uh, this is Amar Kadem there. And then we're going to put Eduardo in charge of the armor. 25 months away from this being done. System survey complete. Yikes. That could have been a lot worse. We just needed to surrender as soon as humanly possible there. All right, let's take a quick look at our worlds here because there's so much to be done. Hang on. Uh, looks like engineering is at a bit of a low point now, so we'll do that. And society as well. Definitely gonna... Oh yeah, that's right, we have to do those upgrades. Forgot all about those. Holy crap. Holy crap. This is what I get for splitting up my recording sessions. I mean, I can't help it. It's not like I can do it differently. But that's just what happens. Hang on, let's see. Oh yeah, we can upgrade all these. I think we've already upgraded this one, right? Yeah, I don't even see the option. Or have we not built an Autoton? We haven't built an Autoton monument here yet. So this population is going to get an Autoton monument and a Hicken Prime. I'm glad I noticed that crap. And then you are definitely going to get a Hydroponics Farm. Sirius Prime is going to upgrade that. And then Earth, I think, has already done theirs. Yes, they have. All right, so we sh Yeah, we're one month away from our new... Uh, Ascension perk, which is nice at least. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be a sign of something more. Look at it. Figure it out. Don't just speculate. Okay, here we go. We have too many colonized systems at the moment, but as soon as this situation, as soon as these borders are touching, I think we'll be okay. So tradition available. 
Energy Grid and Energy Nexus now also produce two Unity. So right now we're getting 154 Unity per turn. Once we select this, boom, 179 per turn. Very nice. And we get access, because we have Prosperity, our terraforming cost just went down. Uh, and we have access to a new Ascension perk. So we could go for World Shaper and have better um, terraforming. Again, we can now terraform worlds that we live on as well as a result of the last patch. So that might not be a bad idea. But then again, we have uh, something to increase our naval capacity. Defender of the Galaxy. So this would actually increase our strength against uh, endgame threats. I don't think we need that just yet, but we might keep it in mind. This would solve our immediate problem of having these borders that aren't touching. This would be a big win there. And then Galactic Contender would give us extra damage against that nearby fallen empire in case we needed it. So that's also kind of tempting. We've got some choices right now. Mastery of Nature I'm not going to worry about. And then, of course, if we wanted more core sector systems, we could do an Imperial Prerogative. But from a roleplay perspective, I don't think that that's the way to go. So some of these require... Yeah, these are all... I'm, I'm trying to see. Okay, we don't have access to some of these yet because we haven't researched battleships. So we don't have Voidborn until then. So I think I kind of want to go for the border expansion just so we can solve our immediate problem. That's the most practical one. And it would give us access to additional resources as well. You know, let's... Uh, yeah, let's do it. Construction complete. There we go. All right, that solves the problem immediately. Let's go ahead and expand Delta Sector to include these other worlds, and that will put our resource gain back to normal. All right, all of that is going to be in Delta Sector. And we should be able to add some additional stuff elsewhere. Yeah, Delta Sector is everything in this arm, and then this is the jump across the arm, so we'll be good there. And then Gamma Sector up here we need to go ahead and add these now i'm hoping that the expansion of our borders doesn't similarly piss off the spire and shard we're pretty close to them there so i just need to not do too much in this area to make them angry but we have some additional worlds in here that we can colonize but we are still waiting for an additional core sector world before we do that i definitely will take that opportunity with one of our with one of the worlds in here that has a good number of slots. And maybe I'll take a look at specifically, not just slots. Oh wait, the full enfranchisement group is... What? Oh, hang on. Hang on. That's why our influence went down. We have a new species in our territory, the Havariga. So they have full citizenship, but they need to have migration controls off in order for us to get more influence from that faction. All right, so yeah, we're getting more influence from them again, but they still, yeah, we're still not making that much. All right, this construction ship is done, which means I need to give them stuff to do. Holy crap. Um, research station, mining station, mining stations. Just do a whole bunch of these. So they, he built the, the wormhole station out there, which is nice. It's nice of him <laughs> to get that done. All right, we're about to colonize that world. Okay. That's everything we can do with that construction ship for now. And I should probably go ahead and build another construction ship, being totally honest with you. A micro singularity recently intersected Baz Karat 5. We've seen that before, so that's some extra physics research for us. And how are we doing on our research, by the way? Nine months away from Physics Lab 2, 22 months away from Core Systems Plus 1, and then two months away from better armor. All right, so Ferrothon Prime definitely needs to be added to Delta Sector. Let's go ahead and add these two. And also, I do need to send some resources to these new sectors. I think I will go ahead and build that new construction ship. Research complete. Let me guess that's the new armor. Yep. Plasteel armor is done, so I now have access to... Ooh, Corps of Engineers. That would be nice. We don't have kinetic weapons. Impulse thruster is handy. Military station health plus 10% sounds really good. Crystal infused plating also could be handy and be done in 18 months. So let's go ahead and go for that. Meanwhile, let's take a look at our ships and see what we have access to here. Filter by slot size. So we can do disruptors. Now, of course, disruptors damage shields a lot. Whereas energy weapons are blocked by shields. So disruptors, adding disruptors on some of my ships would, if I got into conflict with, do I have a better? No, there's only one type for Corvettes. 
this would allow me the ability to damage shields a little bit. Now the average damage here is 2.39, so this would reduce the damage on this ship by a good bit, especially because it's only a level one disruptor. Maybe I'll have disruptors on one of my destroyers. How about that? So we have this gunship here with plasteel armor already installed. Very nice. So what if I did on these small weapons here, what if I replaced, where are these? Now what if I put disruptors here on the front of the gunship, of the Syracuse class? And then the Tunis class is more of our heavy hitting, just laser destroyer. So I'm okay with that being as it is. Clemenceau needs what? I like the idea of the... I don't know, should I have the Clemenceau? Because the Asura is already kind of a support class ship. Alright, so the weapons are where? There and there? Oh, there and there. Okay. So it's those two right there. So I can have disruptors, and there's the two large ones up front. So the gunship stern, I kind of like the idea of one of these being a disruptor. This is the assert class, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, that's gonna need to upgrade going forward. Then the Clemenceau. Yeah, let's make this a disruptor. I just think it would be good to have that balance, the ability to bring down shields a little bit faster using those blueprints. So let's go ahead and queue up those upgrades and let's take a look before we end the episode at the Celestial Alliance. So we have, all right, so right now the Ugo Pragnar Coalition is the Federation president. Um, don't know how that happened. Uh, next president, okay, so we rotate. So it's the Unified Solar Republic and in 2291 in less than 10 years. Um, so our two buddies in the Federation have a pretty damn good opinion of us. Uh, Fleet-wise, okay, so because the Federation president isn't one of our leaders, we can't use the Federation's, um, the Federation designer, but where is this? Okay, I can't actually see where this fleet is, oddly enough. Hang on, maybe it's because... No, I, I genuinely can't see where they are. Oh, wait, no, here they are. Okay, so this right here, this is the fourth Starfleet. This is the only Federation fleet we have right now, so it's in the Ukropraknar's territory. Speaking of the Ukropraknar, let's have another look at some of our... All right, so these guys don't quite like us enough yet. Oh, wow. Wow, okay, they don't, they don't like some of the people in the Federation, so they're never going to be members. Let's take a quick look over here. The Interstellar Lila Robius Pact... Yeah, they really don't like that idea. So they're not getting along with some of the people that... What about the back out of polity? Nope. Okay, so I think we pretty much got the people that we're going to have in our federation, I think. Union of Athenibian Worlds. Um, ooh, they also... They don't like the Havariga or the... They don't like any of us. Wow. All right, well, I'm glad... <laughs> Glad you feel that way, even though you have several of our citizens in our territory. Doesn't quite make sense. Um, okay, whatever you want. Um, let's see. I, I really wish we could colonize that world, but until we can kick the... Um, until we can kick that thing's ass, which we might eventually be able to do, or we will eventually be able to do if we survive, um, we will have to hold off. Oh yeah, that's right. I can build guns on my... Stations. Let's go ahead and queue. Oh, we don't have the resources for it. Let's start queuing them up, though. Extra construction ship on the way. And we're at the 29-minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. In the next one, we are going to continue consolidating this territory. We're going to probably get access to that new core system in the next one, as well as the new physics lab, so our physics research will improve. Crystal-infused plating will make our ships stronger. And um, let's see. These upgrades are in the midst of happening right now. It's taking a while. Let's see how much it changes our fleet power. It's actually going to reduce our fleet power, I think, because... Our ships just became more versatile, but slightly less firepower. So right now they're at 10.6. This will drop 10.634 to be exact. They're going to drop down to what exactly? Complete. System survey complete. 
Alright. Oh, it actually did slightly go up. Nice. Well, anyway, I'll stop this one here. In the next one, we're going to take our new construction ship that just finished and do lots more to uh, build up this territory. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out as usual every day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.